The name Perkins carved in stone. Below a Gothic tower, a boy navigates with a cane. A title. Accessible Technology Options for the Blind and Visually Impaired Reader with Brian Charlson. It's true that books are more accessible to those who are blind and visually impaired than ever before. But it's not as if somebody waved a magic wand and suddenly all those books are available to us. They're available to us as if they've passed through the Tower of Babel. They're in different file formats. They're played on different kinds of technologies. They have different issues associated with digital rights management, that is copy protection of one form or another. And all of these things play a part in deciding where you're going to go for a book, what you're going to be able to access short of buying something new. And there's also the, the pure economics of the issue of accessibility. Since 70% of blind and visually impaired people of employment age are unemployed, and since we as a, as a subset of uh, human beings tend to have bigger financial challenges, the fact that accessing the written word for us is also a question of the cost uh, significantly impacts what is meant by accessible. Just because it's doable doesn't mean that it's readily available to you. Fade to black. A graphic of the Perkins logo swoops across the screen revealing a chapter heading. Braille. We still have the problem of less than 20% of those who are functionally blind, that is, that have uh, insufficient vision to read the printed word under any circumstances, less than 10% of them know Braille. Braille is also bulky, so the storage of and shipping of Braille adds to the cost of that. We're excited though now that we have electronic Braille, that we can use different devices to access that book in Braille. We see a tight shot of the speaker holding an electronic device with a panel of dots and a number of function keys. He touches the various buttons and panels as he describes them. This is called a refresher braille. A refresher braille it utilizes a combination of a braille keyboard, that's the six keys and a space bar to enter braille text. And above this, these are called refreshable braille dots. They're electronically pushed forward so that I can feel them with my fingertip. And by pressing different keys, some dots will disappear and other dots will take their place. This device connects up by Bluetooth or USB to a number of different devices and then allows me to read electronic text in Braille format. So Braille is not made obsolete by technology. Rather, it now has a new life because instead of having hand, tri hand transcribers making Braille, we use computers to generate it. And instead of having to literally translate it and proofread it, we can make that, those translations on the fly. I use this device to interact with computers, both Macintosh and Windows-based, to interact with small portable devices like my iPhone, and I can use it standalone as a note taker as well. The difficulty, price tag, $2,600. Fade to black. Large print. Large print is a very, very important part of the spectrum of accessible books available to those who are blind or low vision. Certainly, uh, when sighted people think of blind people, they think of total blackness or darkness, but that's not the case for most legally blind people. Definition of blindness is a vision of 2200 or better in your best eye with best correction, or a field of view of 20 degrees or greater in your best eye with best correction. If it's less than that, you're legally blind. But you still can read books, for the most part, if they are magnified. If you go to your local public library, you'll find there'll be a section of books that are published in large print by major publishers. There are fewer, certainly, than there are standard print books on the shelf, but they're still a significant number, and they're popular titles. More often than not, however, blind and visually impaired people with usable vision will be using electronic means to read print material. They'll use closed circuit televisions, 
uh, with a combination of a camera that they can point at the text and a TV-like screen that they can use to visualize what's uh, being seen by the camera, control the size, the color foreground and background, and many other visual aspects of it to make it more easily read. In a photograph, we see a closed circuit device that projects a magnified image of a book page onto a video screen. It wasn't too long ago when we said CCTV or closed circuit television, we were talking about something that could only reside on a fairly large desk. Now these devices are small enough to fit in your coat pocket and take them with you to wherever the print need is and hold them up as a miniature screen and be able to control all of these different visual aspects. In a photograph, a woman who is visually impaired stands in a store aisle with two of her children. The woman is using an optical magnification device to read the label on a bottle of laundry detergent. So I think most low vision people who are reading large print are actually reading it generated in this kind of ongoing, electronically magnified method. Fade to black. Accessing books through speech, digital cartridge player. The third method, that is using speech to access your books, comes in two basic types. That is the recorded spoken word, and secondly, synthesized speech. I know of no blind person out there who says, oh, I absolutely preferred synthetic speech over a human voice recording. There's less of the, if you will, acting in the background of a synthesized speech read e-text than that of a human narrator. We even forgive human narrators some of their mispronunciations or accents associated with reading terms because they bring such more experience to the act of listening to a narrated book. The primary producer of these types of audiobooks for the blind and visually impaired has been the National Library Service for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, located in Washington, D.C. There is one device that's made available to all blind and visually impaired people here in the United States who've registered with the Library for the Blind and Physically Handicapped and that's a digital player. We see the speaker holding a digital playback device. The device is slightly smaller than a shoebox and has several buttons in different shapes that control various playback functions. It used to be that our library provided us most of our books on cassette tape, but in the past couple of years we've moved entirely to digital. This small machine can be operated on both battery and plugged in, and instead of having a cassette to slide into it, we use a digital cartridge. Our books come to us through the mail, uh, free matter for the blind, so nobody's having to pay postage to send them to and from. The speaker opens a gray plastic case and removes a cartridge slightly smaller than a deck of cards. This is actually an SD card or secure digital card placed into a hard plastic case so that it's more easily grippable and so that it will be large enough to hold a label both in braille and in print. I'm going to take this slide it into the front of the unit and there's only one way it can fit any other way and it will refuse to go into the outlet. Place it in and turn the machine on. Player on. Roots to Power. A manual for grassroots organizing. Second edition by Lee Staples. Again, all stored on a digital cartridge. These cartridges can come through the mail or the service is also available as what's called a digital download. This is where you go onto the internet to a specific website where you're provided with a username and password. You can go through the catalog of books available, download them to your computer, and then transfer them onto a blank one of these cartridges prior to inserting it into the machine. Fade to black. The Victor Reader Stream. This first small device is called a Victor Reader Stream. It's available from a company, Humanware, and it utilizes those small SD cards I mentioned earlier. This SD card is divided into a series of folders, and I put different kinds of books in different folders. Currently, this holds around 40 books, so it's a very portable method 
And again, I slid this into my computer, transferred books that I downloaded onto this, and then slide them into my small player. Turn my player on. We see a tight shot of the speaker holding a small playback device similar in size to a cell phone. He has just inserted the SD, or secure digital card, into a slot in the top of the device. I'm going to hit the play button for a moment. It happened to Will. You mustn't worry. We take excellent care of the kids here. They're never out of sight. Now, this particular book is human read, but I still have control over the speed of it by first pressing the speed. button at the top and moving the speed. Speed. Three. To three to speed. Four. four. Speed. Five. Or even five times normal speed. Tone. And I'm going to move it back to volume and then press play. Now here's the same narrator at much faster speed. And at night, she asked, at night, everything's locked up tight. We even have a night watchman. Why, is there some reason? No, that call just made me a little edgy. I imagine that for most people who are not used to listening to things very fast, that that sounded like total gibberish. But that, in fact, is the speed that I normally listen to text at. As a result, I can get through a five-hour recording in about an hour and 45 minutes. The more you do this, the easier it becomes. Again, this device is capable of playing human recorded voices, but it's also capable of taking a book that's only available in e-text and use synthesized speech for it. Fade to black. The Book Sense. This player from GW Micro of Fort Wayne, Indiana is called the Book Sense. It looks somewhat like a cell phone but it is actually a digital playback device. I'll turn it on. The speaker holds a small playback device similar in size to a cell phone or micro cassette recorder. We see a close-up shot of the device and then hear the synthesized voice. There we go. Humanware Companion 3.0 release notes doc, three of three. And like the Victor Reader Stream, it's capable of playing back both human voice recordings and electronic text. I've queued up electronic text on it right now, and I'm going to tell it to play a bit, and you'll see that not all synthesized speech sounds alike. Loading. File loaded. Start reading. Reader March 27th, 2009. Installation. The latest release of the Humanware Companion software for Windows is version 3.0. Again, we see a tight shot of the device in the speaker's hands. These devices not only play back books, but do several other functions for us as well. They're digital recorders, so students can use them to record lectures. I use them to record brief notes to myself and to family members, and they can simply come back, find the device waiting for them, press the play button to hear any notes I might have left for them. Fade to black. The Bookport Plus. Another small device that is very popular is called the Bookport Plus. Again, it looks somewhat like a cell phone with a numeric keypad and additional buttons above it. Of course, no screen. I'm going to turn it on. 2.53 a.m. SD card text. And the looking glass TXT. The looking glass dot TXT, it says. So I have a public domain book in here. It's an e-text book that I downloaded from uh, Project Gutenberg, which is an online catalog of public domain books. And I can ask it to read that aloud to me. This would be a wilderness. Alice didn't dare to argue the point, but went on, comma, and I thought I'd try and find my way to the top of that hill. When you say hill. And, of course, I have the ability, utilizing arrow keys, to move faster or slower, to change the voice from male to female, change the pitch. We now see a close-up shot of the Bookport Plus being displayed by the speaker. This device is available through the American Printing House for the Blind on what's called the quota system that allows children K through 12 to receive technologies developed by them at no charge. Their teacher of the visually impaired or TVI can make that request and they can use one of these for doing all of their textbooks. There are a number of reasons why we as a blindness community have been concerned about the production of textbooks, not the least of which 
is the non-text content of those books. On the open page of a science textbook, we see a colorful illustration of a cell with a cutaway, allowing the reader to see the organelles inside. If you take a look at a history book, so much of your understanding of history are the maps that are included that show where history was taking place. So much of science is in the diagram that shows what particular smaller than the eye can perceive component uh, is being referred to in the print text. Again, we see the illustration of the cell in the science textbook. The shot then tilts up to the corresponding page in a braille textbook containing tactile graphics and braille text. So research is being done to determine which terms are best to describe different things, how much information is enough, and how much is too much to try to incorporate in describing those pictures. And whether or not the description is best rendered the same way in Braille as it is spoken aloud, or perhaps not. Perhaps the audio content is not limited to just the spoken word, but rather includes sound effects that are in support of that description. All of these are being investigated. Fade to black. Accessible consumer electronics, the Kindle. The devices I've been showing so far have all been specialty devices for those who are blind or visually impaired. But there are a number of playback devices available to the general public that will also work for those who are blind. For example, this is a Kindle. In a tight shot, we see the screen of a Kindle as the speaker holds the device in front of his chest. And because a Kindle displays books on a screen that you download from the Amazon store, you would think that I couldn't read them. However, there is the ability on a Kindle to turn on a voice that is in every Kindle. And I can turn that voice on and utilize the same keys that a sighted person would to navigate between books on the bookshelf, to be able to open individual books, move through them chapter by chapter or page by page, depending again on how they've been marked up, and let a synthesized voice read it. This gives me a great deal more access to the printed word than being limited exclusively to the works provided through the Braille and Talking Book Library. However, one, I have to pay for them, as do all readers of books on a Kindle. And secondly, there are many titles that are blocked from being read by a disagreement between the publishing industry and Amazon. Fade to black. iPad. Another device that's in common use out there is the Apple iPad. Now the iPad has advantages. One is that it has built-in speech so that I, as a speech user, can turn on that speech. I'll do that now. 159. Tuesday, two, slide to unlock. App Store, double tap to open. And utilizing the speech that's within the device, I can utilize all of the features of the device, including the ability to go to the Amazon Store, or any of a variety of other online stores and download e-text books and allow this synthetic voice Game Center. to read to this open. aloud to me. I think you would agree that this is a better sounding voice and again I can change the speed of this particular voice but I have only one voice choice, this particular voice choice on the Apple iPad. We see a close-up of the speaker's hands holding an iPad. We mentioned earlier that not all blind people are so blind that they can't read print. This device is very popular among low vision people because they can control the size of the text utilizing a feature within the iPad called Zoom. It will allow you to read iBooks of different types, but it also is a little more complex than using one of the CC devices. Here, when something gets enlarged, it frequently will be off the side of the screen and you'll need to move or pan left and right in order to read an entire line. So there's a lot of motion that takes place on the screen as you move to the left and back to the right 
and then the next line to the left and back to the right to read it. But again, in terms of quantity of content, this dramatically improves the ability of blind people to access works that have only recently been published. Fade to black. iPhone. As we've mentioned a number of times, it's important that technology be portable for it to be of value to anybody, whether sighted or blind. And certainly we can't think of a more portable device than a mobile phone. One of the phones that comes with speech enabled in it is called the Apple iPhone. There's both the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4 currently. In the shot, we see the speaker displaying his iPhone. He is about to use the touch screen to navigate through options by swiping or tapping his finger on the screen and listening to the synthesized voice prompts. I'm going to turn my iPhone on. 202. And then using the touch screen. To slide to unlock. Unlock the slide device. Tap. App Store, three new items. Double tap to open. The iPhone has a series of screen icons that I'm going to navigate through by flicking, that is moving my finger, uh, either flicking it left or right across the face of the screen. I'm looking for a particular folder on my screen. Weather. Double tap and to it open. is page one of three. on the first Settings. page. Double tap to and open. I'm going to move. Entertainment, navigation, productive news, games, telecom, photo tools, time management, ID tools, radio tools, social, for books, folder. To my books to folder. Open. Opening books folder, books. And I have three different applications iBooks. that will Double allow me to open. read. One is iBooks. And again, as a speech user, using the speech that's built into Apple i products, the iPhone, the iPad, the iPod, and the Mac computer system, I can open any iBook and be able to have this device read it to me. Audible. Tap to open. There's also a commercial service called Audible where you can get human voice recordings, pay a price to download them and to play them on a playback device. Audible books can be played on the iPhone, but also on most of the other devices that I've shown here, the BookPort Plus, the Book Sense, and the Victor Reader Stream will all play Audible books. RFB and audio. Tap there to are open. several services that specialize in making books available to those who are blind and visually impaired outside of the Braille and Talking Book Library system. The two most popular services are called Bookshare and one called Recordings for the Blind and Dyslexic, recently renamed itself the Learning Ally. These two services take either human voice recording, that would be the Learning Ally, and provide them either by mail on CD that you can transfer into these playback devices or place directly on a CD player. And Bookshare, which takes e-text and makes it downloadable for you to play on these devices using synthetic speech. Fade to black. Optical character recognition. When I want a title, I first go to the free services, the Library for the Blind, and see if they have it available. If they don't, I move on to one of the membership services, Bookshare or Learning Ally, to see if they have it. If they don't have it, I then go on to paid services, Amazon, for example, on the Kindle, or Audible. If they don't have it, then I resort to the final step, which is OCR, Optical Character Recognition. In a photograph, we see an iPal Optical Character Recognition device consisting of a camera on a metal arm above a flat, rectangular surface. There is an open book on the surface. The print in the book is converted and displayed on a monitor as large yellow text on a black background. I'll acquire a copy of the print book and place it either on a flatbed scanner, something like a photocopier, or place it under a digital camera two different products that do that, iPal and the Pearl. And with software on my Windows or Macintosh based computer, tell it to take a picture of the page and then to go through a complicated mathematical process to determine what each letter, each word, each sentence is on that page. To store that as electronic text 
and then to give me the ability to again either transfer it to one of my devices or to have the speech that I use on my computer to read it aloud to me or the screen magnification software on my computer to magnify it to a size that I'm comfortable to read. Again, OCR is the last step toward gaining access to this. Fade to black. Conclusion. If you can learn Braille, I encourage you to do so. Don't think for one moment that it's easier to access text orally than it is in Braille. With the devices I've shown today, I can assure you that refreshable Braille is very achievable and that it will bring you a level of understanding of everything you read in that fashion that is more extensive than simply passively listening to e-text. In a video clip, we see a student using a refreshable brailler in the classroom. It amazes me that in spite of the fact that I am a avid reader, reading in excess of 100 books a year, not to mention magazines and newspapers, that I still have access to less than one book in a thousand. Not that were printed since the beginning of time, but then were printed this year. It's an exciting time to be a blind person because my issues now are not, can I find something to read, but what am I going to read? Fade to black.